Hey guys, Drifter here. I'm showing off some gameplay from the new Onslaught map containment. I'm using the Maverick Assault Rifle right now. I'm using it in a kind of funny setup. I have a foregrip on it for extra accuracy, and I wanted to show the iron sights, but I also didn't want to sacrifice my range on this map, so I decided to use the Flash Suppressor. That's kind of an unusual one, but I wanted nice, clear iron sights with minimal muzzle flash, but I didn't want to lose my range. I didn't really care about being on radar or not because I was playing in a LAN environment where everybody knows where you are and they do callouts anyway, so it doesn't help me. So I just decided to rock the flash suppressor here and it turned out pretty good. I just ran past a ghost point. This map has two ghost points that are key counter sniper positions. They're not normal sniper positions but you can get on both the buildings and shoot across the bridge and stuff and the ghost points that you can kind of breach and detonate allow you to counter snipe and move around and some shortcuts and that kind of stuff. And there's a few gates and a few doors and things that you can blow up and kick open but the big levolution moment or the interactive map or whatever is the nuke in the middle which I just ran away from because it destroys my radar and that is a nuclear warhead or perhaps a nuclear waste containment vessel sitting right there in the middle of the map but don't worry about it you can shoot it as much as possible and the big levolution moment is destroying that and the bridge and altering the map and unfortunately it doesn't nuke the map it's not like the nuke in uh, or not like the KEM strike on strike zone that really changes the whole map or like the MW2 nuke that kills everybody it's more like a dirty bomb because for those of you that aren't nuclear physicists or weapons experts or know that much about nuclear warheads a lot of people think of them like dynamite or like TNT or nitroglycerin or something like that to a really heavy impact or maybe shooting them with a tracer round or setting them on fire or something will just detonate and cause an explosion and a nuclear bomb doesn't blow up when it hits the ground you can take a hammer and beat on it all day it's not going to go off it's a very precise and exact chemical reaction that causes a nuclear warhead to react in the way it does we're not going to get into all the particle physics of it but just roughing it about isn't going to work. So the KEM strike on this map, whether you get it in a package or you get your 25, 24 kills, hardline, whatever, is you call in a mortar strike off from what would be the right side from where I'm facing there up on the hill. I actually didn't see it in time because people were giving conflicting directions because they were looking at either the right or the left and I was spinning around. But it'll come in and it'll hit the bomb in the middle, it'll blow up the truck, and to sink the bridge and change the flow of the map. I'm unfortunately going to be the one that gets the KEM strike at around the six minute mark and call it in so you're going to see what it looks like. Unfortunately I didn't get that good of a vantage point but we did do one later just for fun. We just booted the game up in private match and we we're like alright let's see what this KEM does. So I'm going to show you that gratuitous KEM KEM strike right next to it so that you can get a good feel for it. Uh, this map is really dominated by the bridge. The bridge is what everybody fights over because even though it's a choke point, even though it's the obvious way across, it's still the safest way across. If you do any other way, you have to go down into the ditch and come up the stairs and anybody sitting at the top of the stairs and leaning over the railing is going to have a huge advantage over you. I mean, that's just kind of how it works in uh, any sort of gunfight, even a simulated one in Call of Duty, is that whoever's uh, set up in a very elevated position, position is going to dominate people in the low Lower positions. That's why you don't want to fight in the trenches, you want to fight in like the mountains looking down on people. Just kind of how it works. But of all of the new maps, I would say this is probably the weakest map. And I, I like two of them in particular. I really like Fog and I like Bayview. Ignition is fun, but it's an older map, so it doesn't get that new, like, brilliant design thing going on. The Levolution on that one's very fun, which I'll show you later today. But this one uh, wasn't floating my boat so much. It was also maybe the second biggest. Fog was by far the biggest, but it was a very tight map, and it had uh, a lot of alleyways. This one is more like a big grid, and with the exception of the bridge choke point, it was very uh, sporadic. This is a map where you can get a lot of momentum, and the more momentum you get, the more kills you get, the more control you get, the more spawn control you get, the, like, the easier it is. It's not so much a fair fight, one-on-one -on -one challenge, like tactical positioning map. Like This is the map you'll probably see the most people going ham on, except for Ignition, because, again, Ignition is an older map, and everybody knows how it plays and how to do well with it. If you watch Face Cross's gameplay or Lord's gameplay, I mean, Lord gets like a... Um, a Loki strike the first time we played it and just smashed us into oblivion. If you want to snipe, you can use counter sniper points or go up on top of those ladders that I immediately got shot off. <laughs> there's some elevated positions, but there's no cover once you go elevated. Oh yeah, here's one of the breach points. I can uh, breach this so that I can go out the window and so that I can see across a little bit better with my assault rifle. It wasn't so great, but it was really designed to shoot uh, snipers over there on the ladder position where I just was. And uh, another thing you can do is just kind of camp these stairs to keep people from crossing. It's a very tight control map. And one thing we didn't do that I really wish we did do, we didn't even think about doing it. Uh, we just played a lot of team deathmatch to get the map rotations pretty fast. We probably should have played this domination because I think the B Dom point is going to be in the middle of the map. And when the big bomb comes in and blows up the middle of the map, I think the dom point actually moves, like it sinks. And I feel really silly that we didn't do that, almost as silly as putting my battle hind on top of the building. 
I was I was all panicked there for a second because I thought that was going to be my KEM strike, but the KEM is coming in in a little bit. And that's kind of all I have to say about this map. The spawns are not uh, the worst in the world, but if you play really aggressively, you will get some good and bad spawns, advantageous and disadvantageous, just kind of depending on how you're doing. And it's probably the only map that's really suited for sniper rifle play, other than maybe fog, but a lot of them are really more for SMGs and for the spray sniper rifles and the aggressive classes. So when you do this, don't use your camper classes, use your more aggressive classes, it'll pay off more because they're tinier maps. That's kind of all I got to say about it, so I'm going to kick it over to back to live audio so you can hear what the KEM does. and get a good feel for everything else. Drifter out. Enemy Oracle inbound. Friendly shock at all commencing. Yeah. 